Hey everyone, Tom here. This is Join Route. Thanks for joining me on the channel today. I have an Amazon box here that arrived actually well in advance of my arrival in Wisconsin. So it was just sent here to Wisconsin and then I got here to open it and take a look at it. And let's find out what's inside here. So this is the main event, frankly. This is the, uh, it's a dash cam, <laughs> cut to the chase here, uh, it's a dash cam. This is a VFO A119 Mini 2 with the Sony Starvis 2 sensor. So here we go, we're going to uh, install that in Joy so that Joy will have dash cam capabilities. Kind of important, it seems, out on the road these days. There's a lot of stupid activity that happens. Surprisingly dumb stuff going on out there on the highways. Um, I don't always like to do the interstate, but uh, sometimes I have to. Um, but even some of the uh, state highways, uh, county roads, whatever, can have some goofiness going on. So this is uh, what we're going to be installing in this video. So. Uh, just a precursor to uh, actually getting to the installation, just the unboxing, right? So here is the, the main event. Now, I also picked up a few accessories for the dash cam. The first being a uh, 256 gig micro, uh, X, uh, micro uh, SD card. And um, yes, it actually is a VFO branded um, SD card. And I guess the reason that I did that is because there's some indication that, and this is kind of true of almost anything, is you really need a pretty high quality SD card to do video recording. And I guess, you know, maybe there was some concern that uh, other lesser quality um, SD cards might not work as well with the ca with the uh, camera, so I just decided to play it safe and go with their card. Uh, that way, we know that it's been certified for use with the dash cam, and I don't have to worry about anything else. I, I mean, I know that uh, there are many really truly high quality dash or um, SD cards out there on the market. I mean, I'm literally recording into one right now on my uh, Osmo Action 4. Uh, so, uh, in all likelihood, I could have just purchased one from some of the more uh, notable SD card manufacturers, like SanDisk is uh, the one that I believe is in the, um, in the uh, Osmo Action 4 here. But um, again, just trying to uh, get the certified card for the dash cam so that I'm not experiencing any difficulties with it. The next is something that I probably will not use, uh, to be honest, and that is a dash cam uh, hardware kit. And this allows you to wire into the fuse box of your vehicle and I've found through enough research that it's unlikely that I'm going to get to Joy's uh, under the dash uh, fuse block easily and so there is an alternative that I have decided to run with and that is this one right here. Uh, which was kind of an expensive little piece of kit, and I, <laughs> but I guess it's, it's made by a company that a lot of people trust, and I'm going to place that trust in Garmin as well. What this is, is a constant power cable, they call it, but really what it is, is a way to provide power to accessories like a dash cam, through USB-A ports that are at the other end connected to the OBD port on the vehicle. And of course, all vehicles have an OBD port 
and uh, the cool thing about this particular connector is that it also permits you to select how long the dash cam or whatever accessory you have plugged into its USB ports remain active after you have shut the vehicle off. So you can go 10 minutes, 24 hours, or you can have it remain on indefinitely. And the reason for that would be, or a, a selectable um, situation like this, would be to be sure that any uh, parking mode recordings can continue uh, rather than having the accessory just cut it off after you know 15 minutes or whatever I think is the way Ford does it uh, your accessory uh, power sources in a uh, Ford just kind of shut off after about 15 minutes after you've um, taken the key out of the ignition right um, hello bug so anyway uh, this should provide a more convenient way to establish power for the dash cam. So we'll, we'll run with that and see how that works. I also picked up a circular polarizing lens. And, um, you know, hopefully that might produce, you know, a, a clear, uh, more saturated... Um, looking picture um we'll see i mean I, i'm i'm unclear how this is going to work for uh nighttime use because it does add a bit of um you know a neutral density kind of uh, uh, filtering effect it's going to darken the image a little bit but uh, we'll just have to see how that works uh, for both daytime and nighttime use i'm uh pr pretty um sure that it's going to be very beneficial for daytime use but i'm unclear how it's going to work for nighttime so we'll see and finally i have a wireless bluetooth remote control for the dash cam and the reason for that would be that um, sometimes you might if if an event occurs while you're driving and you need to retain that uh, portion of the video you would typically have to press a button now there is some voice capabilities on this so i think i could just say you know like save video or something like that and the camera would respond by saving the video but um okay fine noise in the cab m might misfire the you know or have it not understand that i've just asked it to save a video so rather than uh, worry about whether or not it's actually doing that or fumbling around sort of up by the or behind the uh, rear view camera that I have uh, mounted up there which is uh, sort of on the rear view mirror you can't see out the back of joy because there's an RV back there uh, but we have a in the embassy dolphin uh, RV models there's a uh, a video rear view mirror uh, so, and I'll probably be installing this sort of up in that area, kind of tucked in behind it, and to try and maybe get to the button that lets you save a recording or a clip on the dash cams, um, on the dash cam m might be impractical. So this little Bluetooth remote might work better in that situation. Unclear. And obviously there must be some sort of a, a battery associated with this uh, because it has to transmit Bluetooth, right? So there has to be a power source to it. But we'll see how that works out and uh, we'll give it a shot. So that is the whole kit right there. Um, and um, we're going to be installing that today. So let's get to that. Okay, well, hopefully the audio isn't crap, and you can hear me as I'm doing this. So we're picking up this episode, uh, or this caper, <laughs> whatever this is, um, of installing this dash cam at um, a point where I have gotten the cable out. Uh, it's a USB 
A to a USB C and um, I've determined that what I'm going to do is put it over on the passenger side and uh, run the, the uh, wiring up under the lip of the headliner here and there is enough of a gap here to where I should be able to get it in here and uh, actually we'll, we'll come out along here and then I'll go in behind the uh, door seal and come down to the other end here. Now also I have the, if I can get it out again, come on, there it is. I have the OBD power adapter, which is going to uh, go out to a couple of USB-A ports and uh, will let me plug in the other end of uh, the dash cams cable just like a so and um, then um, as uh, you may have remembered from the unboxing uh, part of this video there is a, a 10 minute 24 hour and infinite setting for the duration of power during you know after you've shut the vehicle off so um, and I've set it to 24 hours uh, assuming that that will be good for and I'll have to continue to read the manual and everything else on the thing to uh, see exactly how this works but um, uh, presumably that would be good for uh, parking mode uh, because probably I'm, if I'm like at a Walmart parking lot or something like that, then I'm going to want it on and the 24 hour uh, setting seems better than the 10 minute setting, right? At least that will be over the 24 hour mode will be o overnight. So I'll know if anyone was creeping around the van uh, overnight. But um, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. And then uh, also on the dash cam itself, I've already powered it up by plugging it in with its cable uh, and it's included um, 12 volt vo uh, 12 volt power port adapter we used to call them cigarette lighter uh, sockets <laughs> they're not called that anymore really because who smokes anymore really um, I used to I don't know it's been uh, uh, Wow um, Closing in on 30 years since I quit. Anyway, um, trivia. And uh, so I powered it up with this and the cable and formatted the SD card that I've put in here already. So we're ready to rock and roll. All I really need to do is get a good location and then uh, peel off the uh, backing here and stick it to the windshield. I've already applied uh, some alcohol to the uh, windshield to clean it and uh, uh, degrease it in case there was anything uh, that uh, might interfere with the stickiness so that should be good so um, the only thing left really is to get this thing um, attached in such a way that it's nice and straight so that will be um, probably an eyeball kind of thing, right? I mean, how else am I really going to do it? I suppose I could get really super fancy and just um, overthink this to the nth degree, but why go there, right? All I got to do is stick it to the windshield. If it looks pretty straight, probably the videos are going to come out looking pretty straight. All right, at least that's the theory, and I'll hope that that's the way it works out. Okay, so let's... Um, get to uh, work on this. I'm going to take this OBD power adapter and just stick it down in my little cup holder down here. Uh, it's right by where it is going to, um, is right where the OBD port is, so that's convenient. And then, I don't know, I'm probably going to have to turn off the camera, mount it up here, and then we'll resume from that point because the camera right now is rather precariously sitting on the passenger seat and I'll probably have to come around there and uh, try to do this 
um, and probably do it with it powered up too so that I can actually see the uh, video so yeah sorry that uh, it's not going to be that uh, exciting here for a moment while I get that all figured out but we'll plug this back in over here and um, then let's see fly go away and the power plugs in right there and I think that's the way I'm gonna do it um, will that go up easily and around it, it's a USB-C so it'll go in both ways but I'm concerned that if I go on this way that um, the cables gonna kind of well no I think that'll be fine because um, it's gonna actually come up this way so yeah that should be fine uh, okay so I'll, I'll pick back up with you once I've got it stuck to the windshield all right okay the camera is installed and um, looks pretty straight I uh, don't see that it uh, yeah that's uh, reasonably straight um, maybe a fraction of a degree off hard to know exactly um, okay so then I need to get the cable up under the headliner here and actually across the center console that should trap the uh, cable just fine so I don't think that's gonna be a problem so um, yeah that's uh, that's fine and um, yeah I'll try to leave a little extra cable there so that there's no stress on that and uh, then we can continue on around and um, get it in here now one thing that I learned from another van lifer um, and uh, who also has a channel it's Amore Van uh, Guy and Roseanne hi guys uh, <laughs> hi Guy and Roseanne hi, hi guys um, uh, they showed how when they were installing their dash cam that when they uh, placed the cable up under the uh, lip of the uh, headliner here it would just fall back out because there's not enough um, uh, tightness in there uh, to keep it in place so what I did now what Guy did was he did a rather elaborate thing with velcro and stuff uh, seemed uh, way too <laughs> uh way too fancy for my taste so what i did instead is i bought some of this uh backer rod which is a a foam um gap filler if you're like doing concrete work or something and you got a little crack that you need to fill or something this provides a good base for the concrete to go over so it doesn't like all just sink into the whatever it is that you're trying to fill but um, this is it's foam and it's uh, 3 8 of an inch by 20 feet so 20 feet is more than enough for what I'll need here but I'm just gonna open this up here and we'll use it to wedge uh, between the headliner and the windshield after I've got the cable in and uh, hopefully that will uh, do the trick let me just see how that feels Oh, well, even that feels uh, kind of loose. Well, we'll just have to see how it, how it goes. Uh, with any luck, it won't just fall out again. That would be a real pain in the butt, especially if it decides to try to fall out while I'm driving. I would not appreciate that at all. I did have a pair of scissors here. There they are. Okay. Here we go. Now, that's already in behind the center thing here. And with any luck, it's not messing with any sensors back there because I think that this is kind of like a sensor module. So, like, uh, this is what tells the van that it's raining outside and it should do the wash well, windshield wiper thing. But, um, yeah. So, hopefully, I'm not conflicting with anything in there. I don't think it should be an issue. But, uh, yeah. Okay. And we're already here at the edge of the uh, 
headliner. And I'm able to do this without even getting a like a a tool uh, to help with it. It's just going in very easily. Yeah, that's uh, super nice. Parking recording started. Parking recording started. Okay, fine. Um, so that actually feels like it would stay in there. I, I don't think I'd have a problem with it, but I, I'm going to put some of that stuff in there. Feels like there's something right there that won't let me go deeper at that particular point. It's not sticking out, but... Anywho, let's get a little bit of this up there. So we'll start right there. Yeah, that's tight right there. Okay. And run it in. Yeah, it's real loose right here, but it's real tight over here. Okay, and then yeah, it gets kind of tight right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip this off about right here so I can still stuff it up inside there and have it be gone. Well, that's pretty much out of there. Can't really see it anymore. All right. That part is done over the uh, top of the windshield. And boy, I got a lot of this left. Anyone need some? Um, and now I am going to unpower the camera. And uh, continue. pushing this in. There's my phone. There's my phone. Get a little visual on this while I'm doing it. Hmm? Oh. Got to open the shutter thing. Okay, so I'm just going to try and stuff it in here. Oh yeah, it's just going in real easy, so this is not a problem at all. I just got to get it around my finger. We don't need that water uh, glass there. Try to keep my finger out of the way. And continue to push it in here. And then we're going to get down to this cup holder area where I will have to stop the video because I can't be holding on to stuff while I'm doing that. I need to get around the cup holder here and go back behind here. And then it will come down under, let me back up so you can kind of get a better visual on that. So it'll come down under here and around, and then we'll bring it down here. And this is the OBD port adapter, and there's the OBD port right there. Uh, so all I have to do is just uh, plug this in right here. And the red light comes on to let me know that I've got power there. And then I've got this. The, the only tricky part that I can see to all of this is that the hood release latch is right here. It's that thing right there, as you can see right there. There we go. Yep, I just <laughs> I just popped the hood. But I need to get like under that and around it or something. So I don't know how that's going to work. Um, I could. Pro I've got so much extra cable here, uh, plenty of extra cable here that I can probably get around there and uh, uh, see what we can do. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'll be back with you in a minute or in a microsecond in your time. Okay, so 
what I managed to do, and it wasn't hard, uh, well, it was interesting, but it wasn't bad, is tuck the cable up underneath here and then run it under, run it, run it through behind the cup holder and it comes out over here. Uh, yeah. So there we go. And uh, my USB um, A uh, plugs are right there. Uh, so all I need to do is just kind of tidy up the cables here, plug them in, and uh, I should be good to go. Uh, okay, so you can see that I've just taken and uh, used a rubber band to kind of tie up the loose end here. I need to pull out the USB-A connector. Plug that into one of these. That would go that way. Okay. And then I just need to see if I can figure out how to put this up here somewhere. Recording started. Recording started. Okay, so we got power. Uh, I got to be careful not to actually conflict with that. Um, hood release latch. So I'm I'm just sort of feeling my way up here, and it's it's like I'm able to kind of jam it in there. And now when I activate this uh, hood release latch, I'm not feeling anything moving behind it. So I think it's going to be pretty good just right here how I'm how I'm doing it here. Should be just fine. Uh, it, we'll see, you know, as I'm driving down the road, whether or not it falls out or something. Uh, but, uh, and then we'll know that it didn't quite work. But uh, so far, I mean, it feels like it's just going in there just fine. The cable's tucked up there pretty well. And uh, looks pretty clean. I think we got her. Done deal. Going to point out one additional thing here having mounted it over here on the passenger side the nice part about that is that the sd card slot i, don't know if that, I can't tell if that's in focus or not uh is on this side so i can take it out pretty easily it's this right here so that should make uh, getting to the card to uh, offload videos uh, pretty easy so that's excellent
will you go through for me, please? Don't get stuck there. Oh shit, that would be a problem. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs>